I think a lot of people really want to get into woodworking, but have no idea where to start. I ran a woodworking school for three years, and the class that I told everyone they should take first before anything else is spoon carving. Because spoon carving teaches you pretty much everything you need to know about woodworking, and in the process you learn how to safely use sharp tools. And to that end, today we're going to talk about safely using knives and axes to use free and recycled materials to make just about anything you want. Now that we've got our wood split out, we can start carving. And this is a $25 knife. I've got it linked below. It's called a Sloyd knife. You can pretty much use anything, but these are specifically designed for safely carving wood. Our first thing is that we're gonna need to take some big cuts. And so the first cut that I'll usually use from this state is called a power cut. So if you shrug your shoulders, uh, that's basically the where your strength is coming from. You're gonna Hold your work in such a way that the knife is not going to in any way come into contact with it. And you're just going to basically let gravity do its job. So with this cut and with any cut, you're gonna really wanna start by just rubbing the bevel of the blade along the wood. Eventually, as you turn it into the wood, it's gonna start to cut. And we really wanna feel where that resistance just starts. We don't want to just point our, our knife directly into our wood and then try to make something happen because that's going to make it really, really difficult and we're going to lose a lot of our control. So with this, I'm going to find a place kind of up top that's got, you know, just a little bit and then I'm going to use my shoulder to push the knife down towards the ground and through that I'm getting power to remove a lot of material at a time. If you have, you know, if you run into a place where you've got too much material in one spot, you can start lower and remove some chunks, just like we did with the ax. Our second most powerful cut is called the chest lever cut. And that is a cut that's using our lat muscles, but the real power from the cut actually comes from leveraging against our body. This is a really safe cut because just like this, there was no body parts in the way. Here, you have the knife, point it out that way and you know nothing in its path of travel so here we're going to you know just kind of again find where that engage point is with the knife you are using a razor sharp knife um, I think actually one total misnomer that people have is using a dull tool is actually safer, but really a dull tool is far more dangerous because you're going to have to exert far more pressure to make a dull tool work. So yeah, we're using razor sharp tools, um, which can be really intimidating, but again, thinking about where your knife is and where it's going, what would happen if your wood disappeared all of a sudden where your body is. Um, as long as you've got all of that kind of just in your mind at all times, you, this is such a safe thing to do. And actually speaking of that kind of safety, I think this is the perfect time to introduce my personal favorite cut, the pull cut. This is actually one of the most controllable, safest cuts and where a, an insane amount of your detail is gonna come from. Uh, when you're carving. So with this, I'm going to balance the wood up against my body. I'm gonna have the knife pointing towards myself. I have my elbows here and my elbows are tucked into my body. There's kind of two ways that this can work. First, you wanna think about where your other hand is too. So I'm gonna make sure that the, the piece of wood is there just like it was with the ax when we're chopping um, to stop the knife from going into my flesh. Uh, I'm carving very close to the what's called the hilt of the knife right here because if I was carving out here yeah there is actually danger of it slipping and then you know cutting my arm or poking me or something but as long as I'm right here I'm perfectly safe to cut towards myself um, and and you can get especially when you're cutting on a long stemmed spoon or something that's where you're gonna get these really nice perfect cuts um, but something else that's cool is that with this, if you're doing like a real detail cut, you can actually then use your other hand as extra leverage to push your knife and your, your knife hand and, and get a little bit of extra oomph there. Next thing is, uh, I think it's called the apple peeling or potato peeling or whatever, but that's just, um, with this one, the action is that you're actually just moving the knife like this. And once again, you are, your flesh is protected because, um, you know, the knife can't go into your flesh if it's all the way down there. Um, but this is, you know, this is a great detail cut. You're not gonna get a ton of um, power from this, 
but you can get all kinds of detail. And this is how I'll finish the ends of my spoons or the, the edges. It's how I'll do all kinds of roundings. And then the last one is probably the easiest one, but this is also the one that I will say I've cut myself the most times because of this pointy thing going into my flesh right there. So you really just wanna keep aware of where you're at, but if you're doing it right, it's basically going to act like a pair of scissors. If you see the, the piece of wood is one half of the scissors and the knife is the other half, and this is just going to allow me all kinds of control. What I'm doing here is I'm using my thumb of my opposite hand to push the back of the knife. And so the thumb lever cut is great for um, when you're at the ends of things or when you're doing the transition points in your spoons. Um, really, it's safe. It's, it's an easy way to remove a bunch of material, but it's not really something that I'd use just like, you know, right here because I'm not gonna get a whole lot of length. I'm just getting a very short, short cut path there. So now we know how to safely break down our material and how to start practicing, but there are still some very important things missing, like how to keep our tools sharp. Um, you know, what does the start to finish process look like when you're carving a spoon? And so make sure you stay tuned. We've got a whole series on this coming. We're gonna talk a little bit more about affordable toolkits, the places that you can carve, which is alert pretty much anywhere. If you're interested in even more detail about the things that I covered here, as well as how to safely use an ax to carve out a spoon blank, make sure you head on over to my Patreon page where you can get access to all kinds of other long form videos and other behind the scenes content as well. If you're admiring my shirt or the shoes that I'm wearing in this video, they are made by Ariat, one of the long-term sponsors of this channel that makes making videos like this for you to watch at home for free totally possible. When Ariat first approached me about doing some sponsored content in my channel, I couldn't have been more pleased because their clothes are well-made and comfortable and I was already wearing them. Growing up in Montana, cowboy boots are kind of a big deal, so I've worn these pretty much as long as I can remember. In fact, I even wore them on my wedding day and yeah, Area just makes a good product. I have all my favorite products linked below, and if you click that link, you can get 10% off of your first order. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, make sure that you are subscribed with your notifications on. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.